We're live. Oh my goodness. We are, <laughs> we are live. <laughs> and I am alive. Are you alive, CC? Yeah, yes. I'm alive. You're alive. I'm alive. Yes, hey, I hope John, our audience is alive. <laughs> yes. John, are you alive? They're alive. They're alive. Yes, yeah. John is alive too. Dude. <laughs> Due okay, to now I see both on the screen again. Okay, great. Okay, due to technical difficulties. Okay, we might be getting some feedback, so you want to be careful about that. So, all right, so let's get on with the show here, girly. <laughs> okay, due to technical difficulties <laughs> tonight, my uh, my okay. special guest I'm is going to be by voice. But this is Janet Reynolds. I am Reverend Janet Reynolds. And welcome to Insight with Blue Feather. And I am an intuitive counselor, psychic medium. And I'm very happy to be on uh, doing our show tonight. And we'll be, we will be doing our show with a very special guest, which is uh, John P. Chaplick. And the one thing is uh, about John that um, I met him uh, in my writing class with the uh, Life Enrichment Center, and he runs that. He's an he's an author, an an author, yes, but he's he also served in the United States Navy as a Navy officer. And he became president and founder of the Business Resource Group, which is a business valuation firm. He's a former partner in an international CPA firm. And he earned his bachelor's degree from Westland University and his master's degree from the University of Michigan. Uh, I'm going to introduce you, please, to John P. Chaplick. And he's an author. He's written a couple books, and they've been published. And there's more about him on his bio. But please, John, are you here? I'm here. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, please um, speak up <laughs> a little bit more. John? Are you still there? So, yeah, you just speak up a little bit, she was saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can, I can, I can hear you, and I can speak up. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, that's good to know, John. I introduced you um, with some of your bio, which is really very, very interesting. But what I think is most important is, to me, you are the leader to the Life Enrichment Center, and I, it, which is the writing class that I have joined, and I think I've been there now, going into. A year and a half, maybe two years. So please, um, to start out, knowing that you are an author, uh, tell us a little bit about the Life Enrichment Center. You're echoing a little bit. Repeat the question if you could, Janet. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what you do with the Life Enrichment Center. And I know that you are a writer and an author, but I do know that you, uh, we have classes with you uh, on Tuesdays. So tell us a little bit about the Life Enrichment Center. Well, the Life Enrichment Center is a wonderful organization for writers and readers. And I joined that about six or seven years ago when there was only about three members participating. Now we've got about 25. And it's for people really mostly for seniors, but uh, people under 65 are certainly welcome. And it's there to uh, encourage writing books and reading them. And everyone in the group, including you, Janet, is a writer. So we've had, we've had years of fun with me giving them an assignment every week and then following it up with the writing. And I can tell you the writing has improved tremendously over the six years that we've been together. Well, for me, I have learned so much. You know, I love to write, but I like to just write. I don't want to edit, but you have taught me so much about how to edit. 
but I've learned so much more just in in the um, in the topics that you present to us. And it's very, it's all been very, very interesting to me. And I really have enjoyed the class. But let me ask you this. I know that LEC Life Life uh, Enrichment Center is one thing, but what are your favorite activities? Well, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that my favorite activity is writing and reading books. I'm also a golfer, and I raise tropical fish as a hobby. Not many tropical fish hobbies around, but there might be a few of them on the air. <laughs> it's a fun hobby, but still number one for me is writing. And I can so what is your favorite fish? I've got a whole tank full of angelfish here. They're big as can be. And if we had this little mic up so you could see them, I'd lift the thing off the computer and show you the screen, but I guess you can't see them. Yeah, I I used to have fish all the time, and angelfish was my aunt's favorite. She loved the angelfish. And do the angelfish have wings? <laughs> <laughs> well, they no, might. They're just, they they're might. Just very big. <laughs> yeah. They're hard to keep, though, angelfish, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah. are. They're hard to keep. I know. We had a few when I was growing up, and they went to heaven. <laughs> now, now, you know what? I gotta keep that yeah yes uh yeah i'm glad to know that the angel fish fish went to heaven <laughs> that is <laughs> That's what my mom said <laughs> yes yes and do you know what my oldest boy has had fish and and you know um what do we want to say an aquarium is that the right thing to say mm -hmm. he's had that for years yeah <laughs> What do you call it, John? The, the big tank. Yeah, aquarium, right? Aquarium. Yep. Yeah, I got three of them, but the biggest is a twenty-gallon, twenty-gallon aquarium. Yeah. Oh wow! And it's so relaxing to to look at the fish. I know we're getting on subject writing, but it's so relaxing looking at the fish. And I'll, I'll tell you a funny story is that um, when my kids were little, you know, you do the goldfish, right? And so the goldfish would go to heaven. And so I would rush out and buy another goldfish to try to match it and put it in the tank. And then the goldfish would go to heaven again. And <laughs> get a whole goldfish in heaven place. I think there's like a little place in heaven for goldfish. And so we keep doing that. And finally, my son said to me, Mom, you don't have to keep replacing the goldfish. <laughs> he knew it. He, he knew it from the very first time I replaced it. He knew it wasn't the same goldfish. <laughs> yeah, crazy. I think that's that's really it's really interesting. I like to watch them because it's so calming. Mm -hmm. But um, John, how did you become a writer? How did I become a writer? Yeah, uh -huh. what made you become a writer? What was the inspiration there? Well, it's an interesting story. I was a partner in a CPA firm for a long time, and one day I retired. I had my own business and then retired. My wife went off to work as a teacher, and I was sitting alone in the kitchen after breakfast, and it suddenly <coughs> occurred to me that for the first time in my life. So I began to write. I had not written <coughs> but I'd never written fiction books before. Mm -hmm. So I looked around. I had written a, the beginning of the story. I finally found a, a local writer who taught at a university. I finally got her to meet with me. It was clear she did not want to meet with a new writer, but I finally talked her into it. And I asked her when we sat down, I, was, I said, would you like to see my book? And she said, no, I do not want to see your book. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is, what do you read? So I said, well, I read my wife's hand-down books. She reads Nora Roberts, and she reads Daniel Steele. And this writer put up her hand, and she said, stop. Put Nora Roberts and Daniel Steele down, and don't pick them up again. She says, I'll tell you what to read. And then she said, now tell me about your book on your writing. What are your characters' art? Well, I was new. I didn't know what a character arc was. I knew what an arc was, like a rainbow. But I didn't know at the time that a character arc was 
and what she penned was how a character starts out in the book, grows, overcomes problems, and the book comes to an end, they solve the problem. So I just said, well, you know, I just put my characters in and I don't have an arc. She got furious. She stood up and she slammed her napkin down on the table and she walked out. And that was my first introduction to writing. Wow. The writing groups. And of course, my first drafts were usually torn apart pretty badly because they were new and they were rough around the edges. But as I grew with the writing group, I, I got a little better. And one day, we had a guest. It was a Scots, Scotsman from Scotland. He wanted to join our writing group. So we sat down at one end of the table, and I sat down at the other with a group around. And the leader of the group was critiquing my book at the time. And the thing, he had it out on the, on the table, on manuscript, and it was running red with ink. He was just critiquing it all over the place. And he kept saying, oh, this is what's wrong with it, this is what's wrong with it. And this poor visitor from Scotland kept looking over at me. Well, by that time, I was kind of used to criticism. So I didn't do anything. And finally, when the reviewer was finished, he looked at this gospel and he said, well, Angus, this is kind of how our writing group works. Would you like to join? And I just put my head down on the table because I closed my eyes. I just knew this was not going well. He was silent for a few minutes. Finally, he lifted up his head and he said in a very thick Scottish brogue, he said, no, I don't think I'll join. He said, I was planning on joining, but after seeing what you've done to this lad, I don't think I can take it. He walked out and we never saw him again. So I just wrote and wrote more and more. And finally, I got enough experience so I could write the books. And I've written five of them which you can see on my website at any time. So please tell us your website real quick. Art. What What is the name of your website? Engagingbooksonline.com. And you can click on it and you can see all my books. Okay, that's good. Wait a minute, she's going to put, there you go. Engagingbooksonline.com. Engagingbooksonline.com. That is just really special, Cece. Thank you. <laughs> Any, if everyone and anyone would like to see the books that John has written, please go out on engagingbooksonline.com. Okay. Now, John, I know you just published a new one, a new book, and it's called A Light Too Far. Is that correct? Is that your number five? A, a Light Too Far Away, and I've already sold out uh, the first three shipments, and I'm down to five books left, so I've ordered more. Oh, that is so good to know, okay? So can and you... they can see it online when they go to that... Uh that link that you just gave them, they can see it online. Okay. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about it? Just a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting book. Uh, it's about a client of mine. One day a client of mine who I've been working with called me up. Her husband ran the business. They made intraocular lenses. and She had a PhD in chemistry, and she did all the signing up with the regulatory agency. She called me up and she said, John, my husband had a heart attack and died yesterday. I need you to come over. So I came over, and after the tears were shed, and she said, now, John, the reason I called you over is I, I want to know what to do with this business. So I said, well, you now own 100% of the stock. Why don't you stay and run the business? And she just glared at me. And she said, John, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That what I what I wanted you over here for is I, I want to sell the business. I don't know anything about running it. I just want to sell it and I want you to help me sell it, which was the kind of thing I did. But I said, look, this business is embryonic. You're only a couple of years old. If you sell it now, you'll get 50 cents on the dollar or less. Why don't you think about this for a week? I said, if you stay with it and run it, this thing will be worth multiple millions. This is a bad time to make decisions. Why don't you call me back? Think about it. So she called me back a week later and she said, come on down, I'm going to keep the business, show me how to run it. So I brought out the financial statements, being a CPA, that was easy for me, but not for her. 
We laid them out on the, across the counter. And I went over them item by item by item and all day long. And finally, my wife called. She said, John, it's time for supper. Come home. And this nice lady said, no, don't go home. Stay. We'll order in. Let's work till midnight. <laughs> and uh, I turned her loose after a couple of days. To try to just work your way around the shop, and look at the financials, put one and one together and get two, and you'll become familiar. And three days later, the shop foreman called me. He said, John, you got to get this woman off my back. She's driving us nuts out here. So I said, well, I, I have to remind you that this woman who's driving you nuts now owns the business. If I were you, I'd be nice to her. <laughs> but the long story is short. She stayed, she learned the business, she drew it, she sold it for multiple millions and moved to California. And the heroine of A Light Too Far Away is this woman. I now, think a novel about a uh, neurosurgeon, a woman who's a neurosurgeon, who takes on a little kid with a brain tumor and all the things she has to go. Finally, she has to abandon her profession because the medical profession can't solve brain tumors. And she resurrects her father's company, who was beginning a cure for it before the FDA shut him down. She battled the FDA and a bunch of other entities, builds the business up, and fixes this kid's brain tumor with their new concoction. Of course, she can't market it because the FDA has to approve it. That'll take five years, so the book ends before uh, she can market it, but after the kid gets well. So it's a fascinating book. It sounds very fascinating. It, it really does. Um, and, and I know you have four other books and I know I have ordered one and I'm, um, I should be picking it up from uh, Maureen and then I can talk about your books on the next round of uh, topics. But can anyone become a writer, John? You know, I believe everyone, I believe anyone can. Janet, I, 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 I don't want to sound optimistic and I don't want to lead anyone to the wrong hopes, but my belief is that anyone can. And I'm an example. If I can become a writer, anybody can. But the problem is you, you've really got to want to invest your time in it. And I mean a lot of it. And a lot of people aren't willing to do it. But if you're willing to invest your time, uh, you can do it. And a question that I've written down here for both of you, of course, that I would discuss is what's involved in making that commitment. And uh, so I'll preempt your next question because I think I know where you're going. If you want to put the time into it and become a writer, first thing you got to do is read, read, read. Hmm. And then the next big thing, item that you got to overcome, you got to decide on a subject that you, A, no one knows, knows something about and are willing to research what you don't know. And then you have to have a topic that's big enough to allow you to write about 300 pages. And that's what a lot of writers want to do, but they can't. And they get a nice idea, but the, the topic isn't broad enough and they end up writing 50 or 60 pages and saying, I can't do anymore. So you got to pick your topic carefully. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know. You know, you know, and I have written since I have been uh, with LEC, I have written a couple good stories. I really have. I've learned a lot. I have. And yeah, I think, you're a good writer. You're the kind that should keep up with it. I, well, now see, that's a good point. Well stressed. It's, it's the time involved, John. It really is. And sometimes when I'm sitting here by myself, on the couch, I know that I have to get up and write, but to make myself get up and write is not always easy. So, so you're very correct when you say you, it takes a lot of time. You have to want to do it. And, um, and I have written a lot of good stories and some of my stories have been in magazines. And then I have two of my stories. I have it in, in LEC's book that they just uh, put out. And then I have one in Transformation. But once more, John, you're so right. It takes time and you have to want to put that time in. 
You do. And the reason it takes the time to write the thing, and again, the reason you need to take a good topic is there's about 12 major items that are required in writing a book. And I can kind of briefly go over them with you if, if you're interested in that. I think that makes sense to, to do that. Well, let's well, take a quick break, and when we come back, maybe you can tackle a few of those. Okay, okay. let's do it. All right, so we'll do a quick break here. If you guys I'll stay will, online. Okay, you guys will just bear with us. Oh, something happened to our video that we had connected. Okay, so I'm sorry, guys. We're going to have to do this really quick, so we'll just kind of do a little... Sorry about this, having to do that. I guess we're just like in the muckety mucka stuff. <laughs> so hold on just one minute here. We'll just make it happen. Okay, let's make it happen. Okay, we're back. So welcome back to WGSN VB Going Solo Network. We are so happy that you guys are here with us tonight on the Insight with Blue Feather Show with our wonderful host, Reverend Janet M. Reynolds. She's a psychic medium. And if you all want to give her um, a shout out or check out her uh, website, it's bluefeather.net. That's B-L-U-E feather, F-E-A-T-H-E-R dot net. And here's her phone number if you guys like to give her a call. Uh, and maybe after the show, or if you do have a question, you could call her and we could approach it. But her phone number is 813-814-1601. Again, it's 813-814-1601. Did I say that? Did I say yes, you did. Okay. Let me say it again. 813-814-1601. It's been a crazy day for me. I don't know about you guys. But again, her website is bluefeather.net. She'll give you a reading. You tell her that you've seen her here on WGSNDB Going Solo Network. She'll give you a discount. So you want to uh, let her know that. But we, uh, we have her do readings for us all the time. Um, with some of my good friends. So I think you'll enjoy it. So give her a, a shout out if you would, please, and uh, and get a reading. So let's get on back. And I know I've taken over your show. I've hijacked your show, damn it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> I'm so girl. used to doing this. I do apologize. But we yeah. do have a great um, a great guest here tonight. Um, we're talking about the topic is a reader's journey into the writer's craft with our wonderful guest, John, uh, is it Klaplik? Klaplik. Klaplik. Okay, Klaplik. So, um, so he's a professional writer and he's got a wonderful website here, engagingbooksonline.com. We're talking about his latest book, which is A Light Too Far Away. So if you all missed the first part of the show, you definitely need to uh, go back and listen to it. But uh, John's going to give us some tips here. And Janet, I'm going to be quiet, let you take over your show now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries, uh, CC. John, are you still here with us? I'm still here and I'm ready to give you talk about the elements that you need to do in, in, uh, in 
and writing a book. Okay, so then I will make the suggestion to give us at least five, and if we have more time, we will do that. So go right ahead, tell us some tips for writing. Okay, the first thing you need in a book is a hook, something that will hook the reader. And you, writers usually put that in the first few paragraphs. And you can do it any way you want. Um, one writer that I know started out the book by saying, uh, the young man who's, I didn't saying, I didn't know that the young man who sat down next to me in the bus had traveled 3,000 miles to kill me. That's a hook. Um, one of the books that I like the most is Gone with the Wind. Unfortunately, Margaret Mitchell didn't put much of a hook in there. Um, she, she starts to hang out with the, with the heroine, you know, Vivian Lee, Scarlett O'Hara, uh, saying, no, this war is not going to happen, and then it does. Uh, but there's not much of a hook in there in that book. There are a lot of books to do, so when you look at a book, try and find the hook. The second thing you need to do in a book is make sure that your plot development is online. Some books are plot driven, others are character driven. Obviously, uh, Gone with the Wind is a, is a plot driven book and it starts out with the Civil War, a quick southern victory that suddenly deteriorates and the Confederacy is looking downhill. So you can start your plot development any way you want. But it's just the beginning, and after you've engaged the reader, the plot really builds up, and it introduces the main character. Another critical element in writing is the setting. you got to be careful about your setting. Most people think they know about the setting because they're familiar with it, but what they don't know about the setting is that they need to describe it in detail. They need to make sure that you spend some time describing the critical elements in it. Uh, for example, in Gone with the Wind, the magnificence of Tara is a big uh, element of the setting. And the story, she moves the story beautifully through the portrayal of the fire and man of the burning and the post-war elegance. Of the thing. So the setting is key in any book, so watch out for that. The next important item is the, is the descriptive elements of it. You have to be very descriptive in the thing. And Gone with the Wind is extremely descriptive in the brutality of the war. Interestingly enough, Gone with the Wind, which is about a thousand pages, the war ends at about chapter 20, 20, 13 or 14, and it's 26 chapters long. The rest of the book is post-war. And the description and the, and the, the atmospherics that go along with that are absolutely beautiful. The next item you've got to tackle when you're writing, even reading a book. And by the way, these these characteristics that I'm telling you are just as important for the reader to look for as they are for the writer to do. The next important element is the character development. The author has to develop the characters. Otherwise, the book doesn't have any flavor. For example, in Gone with the Wind, Scarlett O'Hara begins as the adored Princess of Terra, but she's gradually forced by the war into a kind of poverty. And when she gets through the war, you end up seeing her kneeling down bare to the bones in a garden that's bereft of anything. And she says, as God is my witness, I'm never going to be hungry again. And that's where Scarlet really begins to develop her character. Yes. So that's important. The next element that's important is dialogue. It's always critical. And oftentimes writers and readers don't look for dialogue enough. Dialogue is the only thing, really, that helps the reader distinguish the character. So what they say and how they say it really changes the wording of it. Now, in Gone with the Wind, the dialogue is interesting in, in, in that the author captures the jargon, uh, particularly of the servants that were there. Most authors don't want to spend their time copying dialogue. So set it out at the beginning and the writer understands it after that. But but not uh, not Margaret Mitchell. All through the book you see words like they took all the candles, Miss Garda, even the one we've been using to find things with in their dock. And I, I, I 
am imagine, I can't believe how a thousand pages of that she kept mimicking that dialogue. So she she takes it to extreme, but it's important. The next critical element is the premise. A lot of authors forget about the premise. It's kind of a forgotten element. But the premise is really what the book is about. I asked a bunch of authors, authors that I know, writers, to tell what the premise was. Believe it or not, they could not elaborate that. You should be able to tell what your premise is in two paragraphs. Just summarize it. Mm -hmm. So knowing what your premise is and being able to elaborate, um, it is, it is it's critical. In Gone with a Wind, the premise is really the story of a war, a civil war told by the women who did not lose it and who refused to accept its results long after the northern occupation. Gone with the Wind is really Margaret Mitchell's clenched fist raised in defiance of the North, and it depicts the Southern Utopia, corrupted by the intrusion of the insensate invaders from the North who ran roughshod over their conquered enemies. So it's, it's important. The types of characters would be the next thing that you have to watch out for. And again, if you're a reader, not a writer, this is just as important for you. You should be looking for the types of characters. And each character's past must coordinate with what that character wants in a way that makes the character credible. I mean, Margaret Mitchell, for example, presents a whole variety of participants, so ranging from aristocrats, aristocrats to slaves to scoundrels, but she focuses the cynical Rhett Butler and the self-serving Scarlett O'Hara, two lovers who can really never come together but manage to survive the war. And, and she does it very, very effectively. She brings out their characters really effectively. Mm -hmm. I think the next thing you've got to watch out for in a book is the obstacles. The book really isn't a book unless the main characters have some obstacles to overcome. Obviously, in Gone with the Wind, Margaret Mitchell's book is The Obstacles of the War. And in it, most of the main characters die. But in addition, Margaret Mitchell introduces a few more barriers even after the war. Ashley Wilkes, the guy she could never have, is trying to find a job and she's trying to help him. And the ravages of that war and their effects on Scarlet's determination to resurrect the former glory of Tara are part of what these obstacles are. And I think if you're reading a book, whether you're writing it or reading it, Watch out for the obstacles. Try to find what they are. The next major item in, in writing or reading a book is watching the pace of the flow. Some, some books move slowly. Some take forever. Gone with the Wind is almost a thousand pages. It takes forever. Moby Dick takes forever. Which most of you have seen the movie Jaws and, and read the book. Jaws is quick. Jaws Jaws moves along on a faster track. So it's up to the author how they want the pace to be. Uh, the, the next major item I think in reading or writing a book is the element of controversy. Unless you have some controversy in the book, not to be confused with obstacles, but, but there should be some controversy between the characters. They, they struggle and sometimes against each other receiving what they want to do. Margaret Mitchell, in her book, raises the bar, capturing the intensity of the anti-Northern bitterness of the Southerners. But in doing so, in doing that in controversy, she brings out the character. So it's important. And I think the last element that you need to consider when you're reading or writing a book is the point of view. Most, both authors are written from an author omniscient point of view. Some authors write from the I perspective. When you read it, the I, 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 I'm doing this. I have trouble writing from the I perspective because I can't use the word, I just have trouble using the word I 3,000 times through the book. But a lot of authors pull it off very, very effectively. So it's, it's your choice, but I think those elements are the ones that you as a reader should look for and you as a writer should try, try to implement in your book. I hope I've covered it without taking too much time. I didn't want to drag this on too much. But no, it's very interesting. No, very interesting. no, John, that's that's one thing that I have learned from you because usually when I write, I'm definite and direct and I don't use a lot of words. 
now I'm learning to use a lot of words and I could say to you, I'm learning to use a lot of action words or adjectives, which is, I've, I've not done that before. So, and then I could use the word elaborate. I've learned to elaborate on my words or my sentences in the process of writing it. So that has taught me a lot. It really has. And uh, the word and, A-N-D, I have learned. And then what was it? It's was and so. So, um, so there is quite a bit that I, after I write it, I go back and I look at it. And then I take all the words out that are uh, words too many. Did that make sense? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, everything, well. yes. So I feel maybe eventually <laughs> I'll write a book, but for right now, I'll just keep writing stories. How does that sound? <laughs> I would keep at it. Don't be discouraged. Do not become discouraged. No, but you know what I like to write about more than anything is when I'm writing them is, is my memories, my memoirs. And um, a story that I wrote last week for Arlene's class, I actually, Bonnie gave me a compliment and said that I was using my imagination for a change because I stuck my head in the tree and I just imagined all kinds of things and it wasn't real, but it was real to me. So I really enjoyed um, doing that. It was different. Well, couldn't you take some of those, those short stories and combine them and make a, make a book out of them? Well, see, that's another thing that I've given thought to. Mm -hmm. So yes, to take my, now what I'm doing is I'm taking my short stories and on my web page and when i send out my newsletter i'm now putting um, a link in there and say read my story so some of my stories that i have written in the class with john and arlene i have now uh due to the fact that arlene made the suggestion to blog them so now i'm starting to blog them good so, yes i think that's very good but I'm very glad that you um, made it tonight. So is there anything else that um, that you can tell us before you leave us? But then I, I do have a question. Of course, you are with Life Enrichment Center and Florida and Florida's Writing Writers Association, and they're both writing forms. Can anyone join? And if if they can, John, please tell them how they can do that. Well, anyone can join the Florida Writers Association. All you have to do is click on Florida Writers Association on your screen, and, and it'll, it'll lead you through the, uh, the protocol for joining. There is a fee, I think of $40 a year, 45 or something like that, and, and it's worth it. And then the nice thing about the Florida Writers Association is once you join, you can go to their annual seminar, which is in October. The third, it's the third weekend in October every year. And it's usually in Orlando. And now this this year it's online. But when this COVID thing gets done, we can go uh, on in, in person. And during that, you learn a lot. From, from one of the things that happens in that, in that seminar is that all the writers who have submitted their books for competition are shown on the screen and then the, the, the final judgment has been made and then shows the writers who won first second and third i've been lucky i've had uh, two gold medal first and one second medal silver uh, so it's uh, but it's a lot of fun to go up there in the stage and get your reward and, and it's an inspiration to people who you know who want to write who are in the audience and, and want to see it and you meet other authors and you meet the people who run the organization and it's a tremendous learning experience. And I agree with you on that, John, because you know what, it, the one of my one stories is in, um, is in transformation is the name of the book. And we did a, a ceremony 
for all of us before the book was put out and it was really um it was really great so but thank you ever so much for being here tonight i really appreciate it uh you just have a good evening and I will be seeing you again uh, soon on the writing class. I'll see you in the class and thank you both for having me. Thank you, it was nice meeting you, John. Okay. Thank you, John. I'll see you all the time, see you later, have fun. Uh-huh. Okay, girl, and then um, would you bring up John's email one more time, please, CC? His website? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. website. That's what mm -hmm. I meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, engagingbooksonline.com. So please, uh, if anybody's interested in joining Life Enrichment Center or Florida Writers Association, I'm sure that you can contact John at that or just go out on uh, floridawritersassociation.com I guess we could say online and then life enrichment center.com. So, but girl, thank you for tonight. I have enjoyed it immensely. It's fun. That was very fun. It's nice to hear about the writing, you know, and, and um, I, I struggle with writing myself, but uh, you know, cause I, I do have the, the one book where I was a collaborative author and, um, and then also, um, that I wrote a book with regards to the interview and I need to get back into doing that again. So this kind of inspired me. So yeah. Well, good girl, because I'll tell you what, I love to write, but the thing that I'm doing of late that I have to stop doing is what they do is every week they send us out a program to where we can, uh, where they give us examples of what we can write about different examples. And sometimes I'm waiting till the last moment. <laughs> like John said, we got to sit there and you got to sit there. And then um, I don't always want to sit there. So I end up doing it uh, on um, Monday night or Monday morning. And then my writing class is Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. When I when I was the uh, in, in the book, the collaborative uh, author in the uh, in, uh, one of Mar Mari Mitchell's books and um, I I did the same thing until the almost the deadline. And then I sat down and then it, I had it written in a half an hour. I sent it to her for editing. She mm -hmm. said she made very little changes to it. And it was yeah, done. Like, why did I wait so long? <laughs> so. Well, what's happening because I'm waiting so long. Mine's not running as smooth as what you just said. <laughs> so then it takes me a little longer to correct it and think about it and write some more. So, mm -hmm. but, um, but I do have two stories and two books, and um, uh, I think that's amazing. And I have written many stories that have been putting in the, been put in the magazines over the years. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you're very talented. You, you know, you 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 don't give yourself credit. I don't think enough credit because you are very talented. So for I, sure, I appreciate that, girl. Mm -hmm. And you know mm -hmm. what my favorite thing is before we leave, right? Do you know what, what? my favorite thing is? <laughs> What's your favorite thing? My favorite thing is powerlifting, girl. <laughs> powerlifting, yeah. You, I need to get into doing something more. More can you know? I've been trying to do a little bit here and there, but yeah. So gotta. I need to get more of a schedule to it. But yeah. you all make sure you contact Janet. Um, Insight with Blue Feather. Her website is bluefeather.net. That's B L U E Feather F E A T H E R dot net. Of course, give her a call on 813-814-1601. Get your reading. Find out what's your future. What's up in your future? And she lives in the in the now. You uh, you re do your readings in the now, so you can um, really understand what's happening in your world. So give her a call. Let her know you heard her here on WGSN TV Going Solo Network, and uh, she'll give you a discount. And we always Thank want you. to pay money. Yes. Thank you, girl. I love you. I love you. All right. Yes. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Bye.